Hi everyone, it's day 11 of NaNoWriMo. We are into the second week, well into the second week of the NaNoWriMo Challenge. I hope you are doing great. I'm Melissa Bourbon and I am founder of WriterSpark Academy, online writing instructor. I've got multiple courses on the WriterSpark Academy Teachable website. I'm a freelance developmental editor, line editor, copywriter, as well as instructor, coach. I do cover design. You can see my Etsy store for that. And I am a number one Amazon and national bestselling author. So I wear a lot of hats. Today I am here and all this month, every day in November, to give quick tips to everybody doing NaNoWriMo and even if you're not. They're just great tips to kind of have in your toolbox as you write your piece of fiction as you're working on your novel, your story. Today, I am talking about backstory. Writing a story, especially during NaNoWriMo, takes more than speed. I mean, it is about word count, of course, but it takes finesse too. It's pretty easy to get tunnel vision, thinking only about your central storyline, and that can often get you stuck because you can run out of things to write about. You can get through it pretty quickly. You can't overlook backstory. Integrating backstory can elevate your narrative without derailing the pace, and it can add depth to your story overall. Here are eight tips on how to intertwine backstory deftly into your piece of writing, into your novel. Number one is strategic timing. Introduce backstory at strategic moments, aligning its revelation with the plot's progression. So for instance, if your character's struggle with trust is integral to the current story, then revealing a past betrayal when they faced something similar can be very powerful and it can show why the character is responding the way that they are. So this timing not only provides context, but it also shapes their present choices and it allows the reader to see that. Number two is to show, don't tell. And there's going to be a whole quick tip on showing, not telling. That is coming up soon. Instead of explicitly narrating a character's past, use actions and subtle cues to reveal it. For instance, if a character's aversion to a particular flower is due to a painful memory associated with it, then that speaks volumes without explicitly stating it, without actually having told it. So you're conveying something powerful by showing it and showing it just in little snippets. Next is employing triggers. Using triggers to link current events to the past is a great way to slip into some sort of backstory. A character encountering a particular song, for example, evokes some memories of a significant life event, and that allows you the opportunity as the writer to introduce that past event through a little bit of backstory. The song acts as a trigger, seamlessly intertwining the backstory to the present scene. I love using triggers. Number four are emotional anchors. Emotions serve as a gateway to the past. Describe a character's sudden fear, for example, of closed spaces that reveals a past trauma without actually narrating it directly. The emotional response hints at the backstory, and that can create a profound impact. And you're allowing the reader to fill in the blanks, which is important because a reader is a partner in this experience, in this reading experience. Number five is relevance and conciseness. Maintain relevance and conciseness in your backstory presentation. Less is more. For example, if a character's fear of water is crucial to the plot, then you want to mention the boating accident that triggered it rather than detailing every aspect of their childhood by the sea. We want to feed in the bits that matter, the bits that create an emotional reaction for your character because that's what matters. We don't need to know every little bit of detail about their childhood. Number six is seamless integration. Blend backstory seamlessly into the narrative. Instead of a dedicated flashback, subtly insert snippets of the past into the ongoing story. No info dumps. An offhand comment about a character's missing family member can hint at an unexplored history and it can pose a question for the reader that they want to get answers to. You're teasing them with little bits of information, not just giving it all to them. Number seven is layering. Present backstory in layers throughout the narrative. Again, this is teasing, revealing little bits, sprinkling hints about a character's lost love interest, letting readers piece together the backstory as the tale unfolds. So you're not just handing it to them on a silver platter. You're 
creating puzzle pieces that they need to put together, and that adds depth and intrigue to the current plot. Finally, number eight is relevance to the present events. Ensure the relevance of the backstory to the current storyline. If a character's past choices impact their present decisions, then revealing the root of those choices becomes really essential to the reader's understanding of that character's actions in the story. You want to make sure that these backstory moments play off or impact or influence work in conjunction with the current story. You aren't just putting them in for the sake of putting them in. They need to be there for a purpose and they need to work in conjunction with the current story. Practice, experiment. These techniques are not necessarily easy. And as I said earlier, they take finesse. So you want to practice them. Find the balance that suits your narrative and your voice. Experiment with different approaches to integrate backstory into your novel, whether it's a NaNoWriMo novel or something else. This allows depth without hindering the narrative. It's a great technique to add depth to your overall story. So practice, practice, practice. You can also go back at the end, of course, and sprinkle it in, and you're going to refine and revise. But go ahead and work on adding those bits as you are able to throughout the writing of your draft. That is a wrap for day 11 my quick tip on backstory. I will be back tomorrow with another quick tip. I will see you then. 